If you're looking to streamline the drafting process you have for your little league team, then this video is for you. Just last week, I was speaking to a close friend of mine who happens to be a little league head coach, and he mentioned that he would love it if there was a more simple to use and streamlined process for figuring out his team drafting every year. And so with that in mind, we put together this template. Hope you enjoy. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses get organized and automated with Airtable and Zapier solutions. In this video, as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at how you could streamline a Little League drafting process using Airtable. But before we get to it, if Airtable and Zapier are things that you're interested in for your business, be sure to click subscribe to this channel. We put out new weekly content and show you how we've done all kinds of really cool things to save people a ton of time working in their business. With that being said, let's jump on into my screen here and let's take a look at this template we put together. Now, first things first, if you're new to Airtable, one of the first places you'll wanna look is up here on these different tabs. So in Airtable, these are called tables and each one of them holds a specific set of data. Now for this example, you'll see that we've got four different sets of data. We have players, obviously these are the different kids who are trying out for the different teams. Uh, and then we have the teams. In our example, we're gonna just be looking at a two-team example just to kind of help streamline this process. Uh, we also have evaluations, and this is where we are performing some sort of evaluative um, process on each player so that we can kind of rank them and then draft our team. And then lastly, we have coaches. Now, in this example, uh, I've th thrown myself in as an assistant coach. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually coach for any Little League teams, but I'm gonna be filling this out from the perspective of somebody who perhaps does coach and how you can go through the process of building the strongest team possible. All right, so let's kind of take a look at how this is set up. So we've got those four different tables and here we have the, uh, the players. And on this, we're just gonna be looking at two or rather 18 different players and we're gonna draft them over two different teams, right? And really what we're doing is these evaluations are subjective and internal. That is to say, all of the data in this, uh, in this database is going to be um, both internal and external, but specifically when we're going to those evaluations, those are internal evaluations. That's done by us and our coaching staff, ranking and uh, you know, evaluating the different Little League players. So let's, let's take a look at how we could set this up. So as you see, we've got this, 18, this set of 18 different players. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this with a control C, just copying all 18 of those records. And I'm gonna drop into evaluations, and this is something you could do when you're first setting this up. And uh, I'm going to first go to my all records view. And inside of my all records view, this is where I'm going to start building all of the different evaluations that need to be completed. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop in here and where the, this links to the players, I'm going to paste all of the different players that I just copied. So when I do that, you'll see that it's gonna to ask to make sure that I do want to expand the table. And of course I do, I want 18 unique records all added. So I go ahead and click continue. And I'm gonna do this one more time. So now I've copied all 18 records twice, right? And now I'm gonna pick the evaluator, and this is where we're linking back to the coaches. And so first, you know, the head coach here, uh, in this example, James, is going to want to evaluate all of the 18 players. And then once he's done, uh, then the assistant coach will, or uh, in this case myself, will also want to evaluate those different players, right? And you'll see that we've got a couple of different ways that we have set up to evaluate them. Uh, we have hitting, fielding, speed, um, and then an overall score. In our example, we're just ranking out of five stars, but you could use any, uh, any number of stars. It doesn't need to be stars. You could just use numbers. Um, so, and, and in addition, you could, of course, expand this to include a much larger amount of you know, uh, different variables that you're evaluating. Uh, in this case, I just went with something really simple, but of course you can get a lot more granular with the data that you're collecting for each player. Okay, and then of course I also have a, um, a, a, less, uh, a less 
quantitative, so more of a qualitative uh, data point here uh, where we're just taking notes, so if we have any notes. And so one important thing to notice is that each player is now going to get ranked twice. So I've got all 18 players once and then all 18 players a second time um, getting an evaluation by first the head coach and then the assistant coach in this example. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and jump into the different views of these evaluations. So we have one where we've uh, created an evaluation by player, and this is where we've grouped all of the different evaluations specific to the player. And so you'll see all of the players are you know, showing up here, and uh, each evaluation would show up. So as we fill out the different evaluation data, then this information will get populated. Now the other thing that we have is a view that's specific to the head coach and a view that's specific to the assistant coach. Now this view is duplicated and just changed ever so slightly. What we've done here is we've set up a filter that is only looking for the evaluator uh, containing a certain name. So in this case, the assistant coach name or my name. Uh, and what I can do is go ahead and get rid of this grouping so that I can really quickly and easily see all of the different evaluations that I still have to perform. So without these having scores, we're not going to have a lot of data inside this database in terms of how we're going to communicate with, uh, with our team how we want to build that. And so in order for this to make any more sense, what we're going to need to do is fill this out. So without uh, wasting a ton of time, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the camera and fill this out for a bunch of the different players. All right, so now that we've got that all set up, what we can do now is drop back into the teams, or rather the players uh, table, and we can take a look at what this is bringing in. So a couple of things to note here, we are rolling up that overall score. Now this is all dependent on the evaluation data that we filled out for each player in this overall field here. So if we go back to players and we take a look at how this is structured, we can see that this is looking at evaluations and it's taking an average of the overall score. An average because we want to include uh, all of the different coaches and take their opinions uh, into uh, consideration here. And so, of course, in this case, we've only filled out evaluations for the assistant coach, that is myself in this example, and the uh, head coach does not have any filled out data on his uh, particular section. Now, of course, this would these results would change as more evaluations are completed. So let's take, for example, Monet here. If we were to look at Monet, the overall score uh, is currently a 5.0. If I were to drop into the evaluations by player, I would see that, uh, let's find Monet. So here's, here we have Monet, and we would, of course, expect to see that five star overall and which we do. Now, if the head coach were to weigh in as well, let's say he ranked him at a four star, then once that is done, then that average score will be adjusted. So now Monet is showing a 4.5, right? Uh, the difference between the four and the five. Uh, and so that's what we see there. And then of course, what we have is the ability to start putting these folks on teams as the draft ensues. And so for example, we could assume then that Monet, let's say Monet gets picked up by the Angels in this case. As soon as we assign him to that team, you'll see that he has disappeared from this section and he's been moved down here where we've grouped the teams together. Uh, similarly now, let's say Picasso was uh, picked second by the Rockies and then we would see that occur as well. So you could go down this line very simply. Now the great part about having this all in one place, of course, is that you not only have that overall score uh, showing right here, you also have access to the different notes if we had left notes. So let's go ahead back into the evaluations and we'll do a search for this. And let's suppose that we had some notes in here All right, dropping back into players now, we would see those uh, notes being pulled through. It's a little messy because there's a comma applied because we have done a roll up here that's combining multiple strings of text or concatenating them. Uh, but if you can overlook that comma, this is a really quick way to get that high level example that tells you, hey, these are the notes that your different coaches have taken uh, for each player. 
And then of course, you're also getting that evaluation count as well, uh, that's showing you how many different evaluations have been created. And this is the number of records that we have. So were we to go back to those evaluations, we would see that there are two for each player. So again, this is a really great way to see that high level score. And right here, we brought this in using the roll-up field. I'll be sure to link some additional uh, video resources for you so that you can explore the roll-up field in greater detail. But if you had a specific score that you wanted to see uh, on uh, the average uh, level, you could very easily recreate this, and I'll show you how to do that. The easiest way would be to duplicate the field, but we could uh, just as easily start from scratch. So I'm going to create a new field here, and let's say I really wanted to know what the average speed was. So that would be the average speed score that was assigned to a player based on the evaluations. So using this, I would start going for that roll-up field, and I'm going to look back at that evaluations table because, again, each player has an evaluation done. And then once I've linked to there, I'm going to bring in whatever variable I'm looking for. In this case, let's say speed, and I'm going to run an average on that, uh, on that uh, variable. And so in this case, I want to bring in a decimal as well, so I can go ahead and do that like so. And now I've got this all set up here. Now again, remember, this is taking an average of all the different evaluations and ranking them, uh, weighing them uh, similarly or identically. So in this case, let's suppose uh, the head coach were to come in and then have a five on speed for, uh, for this particular player. We can go back to this player and then see that, uh, that information right here. So that 3.5 is now a blend of the two and the five rankings between the two different coaches, right? And so we're just taking that average. The more coaches you have, uh, obviously the more evaluations need to be completed, but then the easier it is to get all this in one place. And so ultimately, once all of the players have been uh, you know, assigned to teams, your end result will be two fully uh, developed teams here where all of the players have been assigned accordingly. Now, the last fun thing that you might do over time is, of course, drop back into those teams and here we see what the overall uh, team score and the overall average score are. Actually, here we need to go ahead and change this to an average. And so really what this is going to do is bring in the total of all of the different players assigned to the team, and this will be bringing in the average score of all the players assigned to the team. So if we were to go ahead and effectively assign all of the different players here, let's say we went to these seven go to the Angels and these seven went to the Rockies. Now we have two completely uh, you know, set up teams. And if we were to drop back into teams, we would see what the overall team evaluation score was as well as the average team evaluation score. So this is a really good way for you at the end of a season to go back and to see how well you predicted the performance of the various teams. So if a certain team outperforms another team, is that what your evaluation suggested or uh, did it come as a surprise? All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you you can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.